What's up, everybody, and welcome in to another edition of The Sit Down. As always, if you enjoy this video, please make sure you hit the like button and let me know what you think in the comment section below. Today, if we get this video to 1,000 likes, I will give one lucky commenter $100. So the quicker you do it, the quicker we do the giveaway. Please do me a favor. Also, if you're new around here, you just haven't done it yet or you're living under a rock, do me a favor. Hit that subscribe button below now so you never miss another sit-down video. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to get in to another mafia topic. And in April of 2011, the hit television network VH1 would premiere a show called Mob Wives. The show would center around women in the New York and New Jersey area as we watch them go to dinner, have squabbles and drama, and raise their children. The women had an interesting connection. Most of them were affiliated with American organized crime. The show was created by a woman called Jennifer Graziano. And her sister, seen here, Renee Graziano, was the star. They had an interesting last name. And if you know anything about the Bonanno crime family, it rings familiar. Their father, Anthony Graziano, was a high-ranking member of the Bonanno crime family. Today, we're going to get into his story. The story of TG. Next, on sit-down shorts, Anthony Graziano was born November 12th, 1940. His parents would emigrate from northern Italy and settle in the Lower East Side. They would grow up, and he would grow up, in the Knickerbocker Village housing projects. Now, if you know anything about the Bonanno crime family, Knickerbocker Village is a landscape that many mobsters in that family would grow up in. People like Tony Mira and other members of that family cooled their heels there as youth. Now, not a lot is known about Graziano's life, but later he would tell a judge that he, quote, wouldn't go past seventh grade. He would delve in to a life of crime and for most of his life was very involved not only with loan sharking extortion, but drugs as well. Anthony Graziano would ultimately get connected with the Bonanno crime family. Uh, and in the mid 80s, he was identified by the federal government uh, as a high ranking captain in that group. Now, as we know, during the 80s, it's important to understand the lay of the land with the Bonanno crime family. It had been jockeying with power between Rusty Rustelli, at one point Carmen Galanti, assumed control. In 1979, Galanti would be murdered in Brooklyn. At that point, while inside prison, Philip Rusty Rustelli would take over the family and assume all control. The thing and problem for Rustelli was a lot of it was in prison. Most of the day-to-day -day operations were in the hands of very up-and-coming Joey Messino. As we know with Joey Messino, he was integral in taking the Bonanno crime family really through a lot of murky waters. As we know, dealing with Galanti, the three capos, Power Grab, and Donnie Brasco, Joey Messino, I believe, is one of the best bosses in the history of the American mob, ultimately up to his uh, cooperation. But Joey Messino took that family through a lot of rough waters. For Anthony Graziano, that was big because he was very close with Joey Messino. He'd be regularly seen in walk and talks with the boss of the family. Now, throughout his life, TG was very adept at earning. He was a leader, he was a confidant, and he was close with Joe Messino. By 1990, though, Anthony Graziano would get some bad news. The federal government would indict him on tax evasion. They would allege that he would hide over $100,000 in uh, money he would get, according to them, from illicit activities. Graziano would put the money in bank accounts of his family members. Ultimately, he would get five years in federal prison. Now, according to a source in the underworld, they would tell me that at one point uh, during his time in FCI Jessup in Georgia, it was alleged that Graziano actually would house with televangelist Jim Baker and would be regularly seen as a chummy friend to Baker in prison. Graziano was known at some points as a bit of a jokester. He had a way with words, uh, and he even housed with a televangelist in prison. In 1993, he returned to the streets. By this point, 
he had lived and was living in Staten Island. And for large parts of his reign, and eventually when he become a consigliere, he, quote, owned Staten Island for the Bonanno crime family. He was a big higher up and really ran the island for the Bonanos. Anthony Graziano would come back and at one point had a topless bar on Arthur Kills Road called Hips. During that time, as we know from a previous video seen up here, uh, John Papa was running around the streets uh, as a complete lunatic. He was killing people. He was killing friends. He was robbing people. He was doing scores. At one point, he would go into Hips, the bar owned by Graziano. He got into a beef with a mob member and shot into the roof and into the crowd. At one point, I guess a bullet hit a patron uh, and they were wounded. Papa uh, allegedly left the scene with his cohort, Calvin Henniger. Graziano was absolutely furious and wanted retribution. Now, according to Jimmy Calandra, a Bonanno associate and member of the Bath Avenue crew and ultimate mob informant, he would say uh, on a video done a few months ago that he, alongside members of the Bath Avenue crew, including Fabrizio Di Franzisi, Tommy Reynolds, and Paul Galino, were summoned to a sit down from Anthony Graziano through Anthony Spiro. He would say that Graziano allegedly instructed him and members of the Bath Avenue crew to, quote, find Papa. So Graziano uh, wanted this guy dead or, according to him, roughed up. So Calandra would allege that he and members of the crew would stalk Papa to a residence in Staten Island. Calandra would also say that uh, he would see uh, them outside of his home and make a run for it. They would never ultimately catch up with Papa. And down the road, uh, Graziano would sit down with members of the Colombo crime family and work it all out. But there was at one point, uh, according to members of the government, a conspiracy to kill John Papa. That would ultimately come back to haunt Graziano, which we'll get into down the road. One of the things Graziano was doing in the early 90s as well, he was taking kick up money from members of farm teams, including Chris Pacciello. It was alleged that Pacciello was submitting uh, tens of thousands of dollars regularly to Graziano through bank robberies and other illicit crimes. It was also in surveillance and different photos regularly known that Pacciello was palling around with Graziano's daughter. She and him would be seen here in a photo. Graziano's daughter, Jennifer, can be seen kissing Pacciello, Pacciello in this picture. Now, um, for Graziano, he was making a lot of money in very different places. He was making money through drugs, through farm teams, through extortion, through loan shirking. He was the king of Staten Island far before Pete Davidson. Now, for Graziano, uh, things were starting to come undone, though. Uh, and in the late 90s and early 2000s, he would start experiencing some real issues. One of the things that he would find himself in an issue with was an individual named Gerlando George from Canada, Shasha. Graziano was involved with drugs, and so was Shasha. And they were involved with a marijuana issue and a marijuana deal. At one point, Shasha was regularly talking subversive about T.G. Graziano. He would allege that T.G. Graziano was, quote, a junkie, and it was alleged that Graziano was a heavy cocaine user. Now, I'm not saying that he was, but according to the streets, uh, he was at some point someone that was partaking in cocaine. Now, uh, Shasha was very much from Canada, but he was very much connected with the Bonanno crime family. And a lot of people started to worry about Shasha. Joey Messino at one point uh, reportedly was worried that Shasha was trying to take control of the Bonanno crime family. In late 1999, Messino would urge his brother-in-law, Savi Tali, to take care of George from Canada. Vitali would instruct Patrick Patty from the Bronx, Filippo, and John Johnny Joe Spirito to take out the hit. And in 1999, uh, in a Mercury SUV, Shasha would be picked up and killed by Patrick Patty from the Bronx, Filippo. Now, Filippo would ultimately be convicted of this crime and sentenced to a long prison term. Now, the question is, 
Why was George from Canada killed? Some would allege that it was due to the fact that he called uh, TG a junkie. And as we know, TG was very close with Joey Messino. Now, down the road, it would come out through Joe Messino's cooperation that George from Canada was likely killed due to him being concerned that George was going to try to take over the Bonanno crime family. I guess we can always wonder. I think it was probably due to that. But for T.G. Graziano, power and things were there, but there were also starting to be drama for him. In 2001, in late 2001, T.G. Graziano would be spotted at a Christmas party for the Bonanno crime family. The feds did a pretty heady maneuver here. They knew that at that Christmas party, TG was going to get a lot of kick up payments and some cash. Uh, as he walked out of the Christmas party, he was accosted by the federal government in kind of one of those, we're going to put you on notice moments. They would seize $6,200 from Graziano and give him a slip and tell them to uh, tell him to come down to the federal bid, uh, federal building to get the money back. But it was really putting Graziano on notice. In fact, though, in March of 2002, they would put him on notice. Uh, T.G. Graziano was hit with a huge indictment alleging cocaine deals, loan sharking, extortion, and conspiracy to commit murder. Now, the conspiracy to commit murder would go back to the 1994 incident where he put a price tag on the head of John Papa and Calvin Henniger. Days later, uh, Mr. Graziano would ultimately be hit with another indictment out of South Florida, alleging that he had took part in a telephone scam to bilk almost $12 million out of elderly people. He, alongside his son-in-law, John Porky Zanacchio, were named in that federal indictment. So T.G. Graziano faced a long prison sentence. He was not only involved in one, but two federal indictments. In 2003, he would be uh, sentenced to 135 months, basically 11 years on the South Florida case. Now, sadly for T.G. Graziano, it was proved for the most part that he only received about $2,000 as a tribute payment in that scam. He was someone that would allege it. He had knew nothing about it. Uh, but as we know, the government is always going to push everything north. Uh, and John Porky Zanakia was his son-in-law, so they were always going to involve him. He would also get a nine-year prison sentence for his role in the New York charges involving conspiracy to commit murder of John Papa. In 2011, though, Anthony Graziano would be released from federal prison to a halfway house in Brooklyn. Trouble would not evade him, though. And very quickly, he went right back into the streets, putting money onto the streets in loan sharking and involvement in extortion. Now, for Tony uh, Graziano, this would create another problem. During this time, his uh, daughter, Renee Graziano, had married the individual seen on the left, Hector Pagan. Now, Hector Pagan was Puerto Rican and Italian and had been connected to TG for lots of his life. He would say uh, many years later that he had been around the mafia really since his youth. And Pagan was an earner for TG Graziano. Once Graziano was released from prison in 2011, um, by this point, Pagan was involved in all sorts of crimes and Pagan would prove very costly to T.G. Graziano. The feds would allege that in 2009, he alongside Richard Ricciardi and a man called Luigi Grasso, they would allege that Pagan and his cohorts would kill the individual seen on the left, James Donovan. Now, Donovan was a Lucchese-connected scam artist and check kiter uh, who was involved with check cashing. They would, I guess, find out that Donovan had all sorts of money on them, and they set up a robbery outside of a Gravesend body, auto body shop in 2010. The feds alleged that Hector Pagan was the trigger man, and Ricciardi and Grasso were involved with the murder as well. Ultimately, as the feds do, they arrested Hector Pagan 
and he quickly flipped. He started naming members of the Bonanno crime family he could likely get on wire, including Vinny TV, Bada Lamenti, and his father-in-law, T.G. Graziano. Once he was released, uh, Graziano went right back to the streets and started hassling Hector Pagan about a loan he had put out in the street, alleging that $150,000 had not been repaid. And in the wiretapped conversation, he would tell Pagan, quote, if the guy just gives me $25K, we'll call it a day and that will be that. That conversation would hem Graziano up again. In 2011, he would be indicted for his role in loan sharking and extortion. And ultimately in 2012, would get 11 months in federal prison with the help of Hector Pagan. Graziano would tell the judge in the sentencing, quote, can you get me out of MCC? They're killing me in there. At that point, he would allege that his health problems were major causes for concern. He would also tell his grandkids during the sentencing, quote, I'm sorry for causing such pain and grief. I'm sorry to leave you again. Grandpa loves you all. At this point, he was an old man. Um, for Rene Graziano, his daughter, that embarrassment, though, would not stop. Around this time, she had become very involved with the hit TV series her sister had created. And this would set up a major problem for her relationship with her father. At that point, uh, her father was absolutely furious that she and her sister were going to put this show out. And in fact, multiple members of the Bonanno crime family be considered shelving Graziano due to his daughter's involvement in that case. She would say that her father and her actually would stop talking at one point uh, due to her um, involvement with the show. And to his behest, she put the show out anyway. In 2013, T.G. Graziano was in his 70s and was released from federal prison. That would be the last time he would see a prison cell. Uh, he would ultimately be shelved uh, for his daughter's involvement in the show uh, and would serve out most of the rest of his life in relative anonymity. Uh, in a 2013 though, interview with hit doctor on TV, Dr. Drew, Rene Graziano would say that the father and daughter rekindled their relationship uh, and were happy to be talking again. The elder Graziano, as I said, spent most of the rest of his life um, just serving out his life in his home uh, out of the mafia. He had been shelved. But for him, luckily, he got to spend the lasting moments of his life with his family. In 2019, Tony Graziano would die at the age of 78, seen here with his daughters. Upon the death of their father, Rene Guaziano would go to Instagram to discuss, quote, I can't believe you're gone. Life will never be the same without you. My hero, my protector, my rock, my dad, the best man in the world. Thank you for loving me the way I am and for helping guide my son. We sure are going to miss you. Rest in peace, daddy. We can always remember the kind of people we're talking about here. But in the end, we have to remember the damage that these men do to the families of them. As we know, Rene Graziano decided willingly to go on VH1. We have to admit she went through a lot of terrible things in her life. Obviously, we know she and her family are not perfect. But sadly, she dealt with tons of betrayal, including her former son or her husband, who cooperated against her own father. In the end, we have to feel sorry for the families of these people. Rene Graziano ultimately would appear in, I believe, six seasons of Mob Wives. Uh, for her, though, Hector Pagan would ultimately get 11 years for his role. He would actually cooperate against the two people uh, in the murder. Remember, he was the trigger man, but he would indeed cooperate anyway. He would actually resurface, weirdly enough, years later in a writeaprisoner.com post where he was looking for love on the internet. Uh, he would be released in 2021 and is living somewhere in America. As we know, T.G. Graziano was a huge member of the mafia. And his interesting connections late in his life did him in. 
As always, if you enjoy this video, please make sure you like it and subscribe to the channel so you never miss another sit-down video.